Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about what multi-cloud networking is. We'll define what it is, we'll talk about the challenges that can happen when taking your common network fabric across clouds, and we'll talk about the advantages you can realize if you harness multi-cloud networking as a strategy. So first, let's talk about what multi-cloud networking is. As the name would allude to, multi-cloud networking is fundamentally about the connectivity between cloud environments, whether different public clouds or your private clouds, or maybe your managed Kubernetes service, really anywhere that you'd run a workload. There's actually several ways to achieve this connectivity with the most well-known ways being the offerings from the public cloud providers, whether AWS's Direct Connect, Azure Express Route or GCP's dedicated interconnect. In addition to those options, you could also look at running a transit appliance within your public clouds for additional capabilities, or depending on your private cloud connectivity provider, they may offer transit solutions as well. With all of these options, you can make individual connections to each cloud, potentially in a hub and spoke fashion or full mesh. Now let's talk about the challenges that you may encounter with multi-cloud networking. First is operational scalability. Uh, the first few connections might be easy to configure and manage, but of course each additional connection is added operational overhead. And if you need to mesh each cloud together, you have an exponential increase in operational overhead. The next challenge is IP addressing. And this is twofold. First, network engineers are very familiar with the challenges of planning IP addressing across large networks. And when an acquisition happens, how that throws off your entire IP addressing plan when you have overlapping IP addresses. Just imagine what happens every time you adopt a new cloud environment that has some sort of overlapping IP range. Secondly, just the sheer volume of IP addressing that you have to account for and manage becomes quite overwhelming as well. It becomes a challenge to even find any of your workloads. DNS is one way to help with this, but it needs to be able to accommodate for the native cloud workloads. The last challenge I'll mention is around security complexity. With cloud environment sprawl, we can expect that we'll see security implementations of all types with all vendors with many solutions because it can be hard to implement guidelines and governance. As you pursue multi-cloud networking, you'll need to adopt all types of security that may or may not have been implemented properly according to company standards, but rather by well-meaning folks who are focused on implementing at speed. So with all that said, let's chat about some of the ways multi-cloud networking can turn into a strategic advantage if implemented well. First is that multi-cloud transit, if done with automation and orchestration, can actually turn cloud resources into an agile resource rather than adding burden to networking teams. You can bring in resources as they're needed and the transit is taken care of when you use gateways that have the ability to create connectivity through automation and orchestration. One such solution for this is F5 Distributed Cloud, where a customer edge can be deployed through automation and extend our global common fabric. A fabric that is built on a very high speed backbone. Your multiple clouds are then able to communicate and your cloud workloads are all seamlessly connected through this global common fabric. And this then allows for the consumption of the best features and services of each cloud provider. Another advantage to strategic multi-cloud networking is being able to enable a shared security model. And this is really enabled as you have services deployed on a global fabric like the F5 distributed cloud. You'll have visibility to both ends of every connection from the edge to the application and the full capabilities of every service become a function of the network rather than functions of specific services or servers. You'll be able to reduce the amount of one-offs across your cloud architecture while building security inherently on a fast, persistent, and stable network. And lastly, you'll enable a network fluidity that will allow you to accommodate for scenarios where you're acquiring a new organization or integrating additional clouds that have been built outside of your IP addressing parameters. From a routing perspective, bringing on new locations or clouds is simple through just the extension of your fabric. And for the scenarios where that new addition has IP addressing that overlaps, it's common to encounter a VPC that has been created with a 10 16 network. Well, you could take advantage of a globally distributed proxy that will allow you to mask IP addresses behind it. Additionally, having a network that is application layer focused allows you to advertise services while applying policies and controls granularly. At this point, IP addressing becomes much less of a worry. By being able to solve for these challenges quickly, you can enable that new acquisition or cloud environment to integrate into your existing business faster and get to add value quickly. 
In conclusion, multi-cloud networking is a way to refer to the connectivity between cloud environments. It does open up challenges, but as you can see, solving for these challenges can actually turn into strategic advantages for your business. I hope you enjoyed this Brightboard lesson today. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below and otherwise hit subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.